Hey guys, it's Mr. Decker here again, and we're looking at lesson 13 in the code.org CS discoveries unit. And we're going to figure out how to get the sprites to move today. Let's make this happen. All right, bubble one, the counter pattern. This pattern is one of the most important ones in all of programming. And this is what the counter pattern looks like. You're adding numbers using math <clears throat> to add to, like for this, right, this could be like an x location kind of thing. So if we're adding to x, that's going to move a sprite or an object across the screen one pixel at a time at a rate of 30 per second. So it would actually be 30 pixels per second that it's moving across the screen. All right. So it's used to increase the value of a variable by one. And you typically put it in the draw loop like you see down here on line seven in the code, where we have counter gets counter plus one. You might call it the counter pattern since it can be used to make a variable that counts up. You'll use this pattern a lot, especially with the draw loop. Let's see what that looks like. Do this. It says, this program creates a variable counter right here on line one and then uses the counter pattern to make it count up down here on line seven. When you run the program, what do you think you'll see on the screen? Read the program, make a prediction what the output will be, run the program, check your prediction, and then discuss. All right, so up on line one, like we've said, we've got the counter variable created, and it starts with a value of zero. And then inside the draw loop, we're making the background white, the text size is linked to the counter, that's interesting. And then the text itself is linked to this counter variable. So, and then down here on line seven, the last thing in our draw loop is the counter pattern here for the counter. Counter gets counter plus one. So what I predict is going to happen here, let's see how to phrase this. Um, the number, zero will appear on the screen at zero x 400 y and then that number will rapid rapidly increase in <clears throat> size and value so what i'm saying there is a number zero is going to appear down here and then at a rate of 30 times a second. So by the time a second goes by very fast, right? One second, that counter should be at 30 and that, and the text size should be at 30. And then it's just going to increase and increase and increase as time goes by. Oh yeah. So I was correct, which is the best kind of correct. All right, finish there. Let's continue. We're looking at bubble two. And on bubble two, this level follows a video you may have watched with your class, but we're going to skip that and just do the code. Sprite movement. Using the counter pattern, you can write programs that animate sprites smoothly, adding to or removing from a sprite's X or Y property in the draw loop. Make sure Sprite move just a bit each time it's redrawn. So under do this, it tells us that we need to read the code that makes the jet go up the screen, which is down here on line 10. That's where the counter pattern is. Notice that uh, I think we've gone over this before on the last lesson, lesson 12, which was on the draw loop. But you never set up your sprites inside of a draw loop. You always set them up at the top. And then inside <clears throat> your draw loop, you're updating the location of that jet. We're saying jet.y gets jet.y minus three. So if we're using y and subtracting on y, that jet is going to go up. If we were adding to y, the jet would go down the screen. And then the jet starts at 350, 350. So the jet should be around here somewhere, and then it should move up the screen when we read, oh. Yeah, there's the jet moving up the screen. So now we're going to add code that makes the plane move to the right. So we're going to go in our sprites drawer. We're going to grab sprite.x. 
since we're making the plane move to the right. I put that on line 13 underneath this comment block where it says add code that makes the plane move to the right. So I'm going to match the variable label. So plane is what I want to type in here. And then I'm going to use some math. So I'm going to go to the math drawer. And if I want this to move on X, <clears throat> right, I've got to use X. So plane.x gets plane.x plus, and I'm going to give it a speed of three. And to make it move this way, you add to X. To make it move to the left, you subtract from X. Since our plane starts on this side and we're trying to get him to fly to the right, we're going to add to X. So we're going to grab that math operator. We're going to go back into sprites, grab sprite.y. It's going to be plane. So plane.x gets plane. Dot, or sorry. Oh my goodness. No! Get out of here. I grabbed the wrong one. So plane.x gets plane.x plus three. And that should make our airplane drive across the screen. Or fly, sorry. And they just miss each other. Just like an aerial show. All right. Let's finish there and continue. And we're on bubble three now. And on bubble three, we're moving to the left this time. We know how to move to the right. We're adding to x. To move to the left, we've got to subtract from x. So down here, it says, make your program animate like the image to the right, getting this fly to fly across the screen to the left. And we're going to use the counter pattern to make the sprite move left. Use the fly.x with the counter pattern, so sprite.x, fly.x to match that variable label. Math drawer, we're subtracting this time. Back to sprite drawer, sprite.x, change that to fly.x, and then we are subtracting, let's say, 3. Seems like a good number. And there we go, he flies to the left. Reset run. Resets him. Now, the thing about using the counter pattern without looping him back is he's just going to continue to fly off into the negative X numbers forever unless we were to loop him back. We haven't gotten there yet. We, we haven't learned conditionals yet, so we're going to continue from here. Uh, and then if you want him to move faster, like it says in the tip, right? we could say 10 here run it, and then he zooms really fast off the screen. So let's finish there, continue. That puts us on to bubble four. And on bubble four, we're going to work on diagonal movement. We're updating both the X or Y properties of a sprite, or sorry, updating both the X or Y properties of a sprite can make it move diagonally. You can use the watchers under the code area to see how each property is changing. Do this. Read the code that makes the mouse go down. And yeah, he goes down the screen. And then down here, you can see the watcher running. And that Y value is just increasing and increasing and increasing. Uh, sorry, mouse.x is static. He starts at 50-50. That 50 will never change because we've never added to that inside our draw loop. We're only using a counter pattern for Y at the moment. So I'm going to reset that. And then let's see. Yep, so we took a look at the X and Y properties. Only the Y property was increasing because it's, it's the only value getting added to with a counter pattern inside the draw loop at the moment. So we're going to add one more line of code to make the mouse move diagonally. Use the counter pattern with the mouse's X property. So we're going to go into the sprite store, sprite.x. It's going to be mouse.x gets mouse.x plus 2 to make it perfect. And you can actually type in these. Uh, and I just tabbed over, and it automatically set that block for me. So run, and then he moves diagonally. And then let's change his rotation at the top uh, for this challenge. Oh, yeah, let's look at the watchers. So now X is increasing at the same rate that Y is increasing. But let's make the mouse uh, scurry away and point in the direction he's headed. So to do that, we need a sprite rotation up here. Match that variable label. Mouse. 
So the computer understands we're talking about the mouse variable that we created up on line four. And let's see, mouse.rotation gets, let's see, let's try 45 maybe, run. Oh, wrong way. Let's try negative 45, run it. There we go. Negative 45, now he's pacing the direction that he's running, which is kind of what he probably wanted to do in the first place, right? Okay, let's finish, and let's continue on to bubble five. All right, we've got a prediction, it looks like. Read this program and predict which of the following animations will be produced. All right, so let's see. Let's look at the counter pattern. So the red car should be moving to the right. The yellow car should be going down the screen because we're adding to Y. The blue car should be going left and the green car should be going up. Okay. So if I can remember that, let's see. So the red car should be going to the right. This one's going left. So A is not it. B is not it. C, the red car is going to the right. The yellow car should be going down the screen, and it is. The blue car should be going left, and the green car should be going up. Yeah, so C, run. Yeah, it matches perfectly. Finish, continue. All right, let's make this pan spin, shall we? I bet we're going to be adding to the rotation value. Let's see. So using the counter pattern on a sprite's rotation property can make it spin around. Do this. Make the pan spin like in the image on the right. Okay, so it's spinning really slowly. Make sure to use the counter pattern with the sprite's rotation property. So we're going to go in sprites, sprite.rotation. Apparently it lets you know because it's the only uh, block in the sprite store. We're going to say match that variable label, pan.rotation. Go into the math drawer. It's spinning to the right. So I'm going to make it spin to the right by adding to its rotation value. Uh, so pan, or wait, pan.rotation. Oh, maybe I don't need to do that. Pan.rotation. Hang on a second. Using the counter pattern, it's pan.rotation plus two. Let's see if that works. There we go. Yeah, it's spinning. If I did negative two, it should spin the opposite direction. Yeah. If I take out the background, it makes a interesting little pattern there because the background is not being drawn. So you actually are seeing every iteration that the draw loop is making. Background color, I think it was sea green or pale green originally. Yeah, OK. All right, and let's reset that to two. Actually, change it to one because it's going real slow there. All right, there you go. We'll finish right there and continue. And now we're debugging and watching the counter pattern. We're on B, 6B. All right, this program should move the motorcycle from the bottom left to the top right, as in the image to the right, right here. Zoom. However, the motorcycle moves off the screen too quickly to see what's going wrong. So if I run it, oh, so it just barely, you can see a blip of it down here in the bottom left corner of the display. It's easy to miss. I'll keep running it so you see it. Yep, <clears throat> just a little blip of it. All right, take a look at the value in the watcher. 
you should see cycle.x property values. So if I run it, yeah, so x is increasing. Add a watcher for the y property. Type cycle.y in the watcher box. So here we're going to type cycle.y. And then we're going to add that. And now you can see the y value increasing. OK. Run the program, see what happens to the properties and why the motorcycle is disappearing. What is happening to the cycle's y property value? When we run it, the y value is increasing, which tells you that it's going down y. It needs to be going up on y. OK, so what should the cycle's y property value be doing? It should be decreasing. Debug the program. All right, let's get the instructions out of our way. So instead of adding to y, we're going to subtract on y. We can do this easily by clicking show text, putting our cursor right there so we can backspace that plus, put a minus right there, show blocks again, and then reset run. And there we go. And now y on, in our watcher down here in the right hand corner, <clears throat> The x value is going up, and the y value is going down. It's decreasing, which is making him go up at that diagonal. Cool. All right, rotation direction. Let's work on making these gears work together. Right now, what are we doing? Oh, nothing. We're just, we're just sitting pretty. <clears throat> All right. When you use the counter pattern for the rotation property with addition, the object will always rotate clockwise. Clockwise is this way. Sometimes, however, you'll want your sprite to rotate the other direction, and to do this, you just use subtraction to make it go counterclockwise. Do this. There are three gears set up for you. You need to make the gears all look like they're rotating in sync with each other. So the green one to the is rotating clockwise, the blue one's rotating counterclockwise, and the red one's rotating clockwise. We're going to have to set them all at the same speed, too, for that rotation to make it look right. Make the gears rotate so they look like they're working as one system. Hint, they won't rotate the same direction. Use the counter pattern for... The rotation property with addition for two gears with subtraction for one gear. So green gear is going to be added to, red gear will be added to, and blue gear will be subtracted. So let's get down to business. Sprite drawer, I'm going to go ahead and pull sprite rotation out for each one. And then we're going to match those variable labels. So blue gear, green gear, and red gear. And I'm, it doesn't particularly matter what order you put those in down here, as long as you're doing the right counter pattern for them. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this. So the blue gear needs to sub be subtracted. So blue gear dot rotation gets blue gear dot rotation minus to enter and that populates everything in there you can also do it this way where you grab the math operator that you need hop back into the sprite store grab the sprite block that you need type that in give it that value i i kind of like just typing it in but if if you prefer to drag the blocks out i totally get it i understand completely so back to the math drawer we're going to add to the red gear also. Uh, oh, whoops. So yeah, if we want to use that process, red gear plus two. So they all should have the same speed. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I see. Do you see it? Do you see the error? That capital G, I forgot to capitalize my G for 
using camel case over here. There we go. Let's hit run, and there you have it. And then <clears throat> you can increase these values if you want to have fun with it. So like 10, 10, and 10. And then reset run, and you can make them spin really, 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 really fast. All right. Let's finish and continue. I think that's done. I think we finished the practice. Yes. All right. So let's finish, and we're going to jump over to bubble seven, and I believe that's the assessment bubble it is. We can tell that by the purple check mark. Fish animation. Using the counter pattern, make all three of the fish move left across the screen as they do in the image to the right. The blue fish is going to move the fastest. The green fish should move the slowest, and I guess red fish or orange fish is the medium fish, medium speed. All right, so blue fish is faster, green fish is slowest, orange fish is medium speed. So let's get that out of our way. All right, let's make the blue fish move. So we're going to use the counter pattern. So we're making them move on X, and we're subtracting from X to make them move left, because when, when we start, we're right here. Oh, we already have the orange fish moving. He's medium, so we'll set the blue one to a speed of three. So sprite.x, and this is going to be blue fish. And blue fish, let's go into math. We're subtracting. Back to sprites. Bluefish.x gets bluefish.x minus three. He should be the fastest one. There we go. That's working. And then we're going to do the do this for the green fish as well. So we'll start right here with sprite.x. Green fish, not green gish, but green fish. And then just to demonstrate this method again, greenfish.x minus 1. Enter. Run it. And now we're all moving to the left at the appropriate speeds that it was asking for. And that's all we need to do there. So let's finish and continue. Oh, man. All right, we're going to make them wiggle as they move. So we're going to mess with their rotation. We're going to make bubbles go up the screen, add a shark to it, add a falling starfish, more creatures. Holy majoli. All right, more fish. All right, we're in A, and this little symbol right here indicates that we're in a bubble that's going to be used later. So we got to make sure we get everything right. Before you learned the counter pattern, you learned to set sprite properties, such as rotation, to ran random values to animate them. By setting the rotation of the fish to a random number, you can make them appear to wiggle slightly, and this will make their movement animation more lifelike. Do this. For each fish, use the counter pattern to move it across the screen, similar to the example. So oh, I have to redo the work I just did? Bruh. All right. All right. Let me version history this. I'll start over. My goodness gracious. All right. All right. So the orange fish is moving at a rate of two. The blue fish is the fastest one. Let's redo this real fast. That's kind of annoying, not going to lie. Blue fish, it's blue fish dot x minus 3, enter. And then on this next one, green fish gets green fish dot x minus 1, enter. All right. So now they should all be moving. Quick as that. And now we're going to... Uh, make them wiggle as they move across the screen. So it looks like they're really swimming. All right. Uh, Sprite.rotation. I'm going to line these up like that. So Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V matching those variable labels, and then 
we want to do math, we're going to random number this. And we're just going to do like negative 5, 5 for each one. There we go. Run it. Oh, whoa. Wait, reset, run. I want to bring, hang on. How did the bluefish end up way up there? Let's see. 100, 200, 300. Did I do something wrong somewhere? To make the blue one be at the top. Why is he up there? Let's see, 200. Oh, okay, so they're starting, I see. So they start at random places. It's nothing wrong with it. Okay, nothing's wrong with it. So down here, this is what we needed to change to get them to wiggle, get them to wiggle. We're gonna finish there, I think. Uh, yeah. Finish and continue. Next one, let's see. Into the bubbles. We got to make bubbles rise. All right, bubbles rising up the screen. Let's make that happen. Still doing this continuous project. You can also use the counter pattern to animate shapes such as rectangles and ellipses. Since this is an underwater scene, let's try to create a bubble that floats to the top of the screen using an ellipse shape. If we use the counter pattern to update the Y value of the ellipse, we can make it seem like it's floating to the top of the screen. All right. So I'm not going to lie to you. Making uh, objects move up the screen is kind of, uh, kind of weird in the process that you have to do it with. But follow along. All right. We're going to create a variable at the top. I'm going to call this bubble rise and I'm going to give it a value of 400 so that starts my bubbles down at the bottom of the screen and they're going to rise up the screen okay all right now here comes the complicated stuff so let's draw our animations under this draw block or this uh, sorry comment block here all right so let's think of the order that we need to do this in to draw the bubble first so no fill so that it doesn't have anything inside the bubble, no colors inside of it. We're then going to add a stroke color to it. So the exterior of it is white. And then we're going to give it a stroke weight. Let's give it a stroke weight of two. And then now we're going to draw, I'm going to make three bubbles. And to do that, I need three ellipse blocks. All right. And then I'm going to get rid of this last parameter by clicking the arrow at the end of that block. So I have X, Y, and this is basically now just a size block. And I'm going to make each of these slightly different. And I'm also going to make them appear in different spots on Y. So they're not all rising at the same, uh, rising at the same level across the screen coming up at the same, in the same way. So we're going to grab some math and we're going to put some addition in here. We'll let one start at Okay, so they're all gonna start at bubble rise. And then the other two, we're gonna add to bubble rise. So control C, control V, control V. We'll add, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna add to it so that it starts down here instead of on the display. 
Uh, we'll add 30 and we'll add 50 here. We're going to start them on X, uh, put them at different places on X, like 125, 200 is fine, and then like 315. Okay, now we've got to use the counter pattern to make them go up. So we're going to grab this block right here, not the variable block that we use to create that variable. We're going to use the variable or call it rather. So this is bubble rise. And then we're going to say math. And we're subtracting to get the bubbles to go up. So bubble rise again. And let's give them a speed of 1. Make those bubbles go up real slow. All right. That should be everything. Let's make sure it works. There we go. There's my bubbles. I'm actually going to add more. Let's add like 60 here, and let's add like 100 to this one, and then that should really get them at different points. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Now my bubbles are rising. So like I said, to get that effect to look really good and how you probably want it to look. It's a little bit complex, but it works. It works, it works. All right, let's finish there. And we're on C. We're going to add a shark. Let's make him fly across the bottom of the screen. All right, at this point, you should have fish that wiggle as they swim right to the left across the screen, and bubbles that float up to the top of the screen. Now let's add a shark lurking at the bottom of the screen. So let's find a shark animation. Let's just look up shark. Uh, I like this guy. Sure. And then we need to flip him. So we're going to flip him. Boop. Just like that. Or wait, no, we want him to go to the right, right? Right? Right. Shark one, that's fine. Yeah, because right here, he's going to the right, and the fish are going to the left. All right, find a shark animation that you like. Make the shark's location random so that it's in a different location towards the bottom of the screen each time your program is run. Use the counter pattern to make the shark move from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. All right. Um, let's see. All right, let's make our shark first. Whoop, moving around. Shark. Uh, he's going to start at a random, well, no, I'm going to start him at a random Y. He's always going to start on the left, so we'll always start him at zero. Uh, and then... The y value, let's give it a value between, say, 380 and 230. So 230 to 380. And then we need to set that animation for the shark to the shark. All right, so he should appear on the screen, and he does. Uh, 230 might be too high up, so let's do 300 to 380. There we go. Yeah, that works. All right, and then we're going to use the counter pattern to make the shark move from the left to the right. And let's up do that under update values up here. So sprite dot x because we're moving left to right shark dot x gets shark dot x plus since we're moving to the right and we'll give that a value of two reset run and there he goes sweet all right, 
let's finish there. That's going to put us on to the next one, which is D, add a falling starfish. So you should now have fish that wiggle as they swim to the swim right to left across the screen, bubbles that float up to the top of the screen, and a shark swimming left to right. Now let's add the falling starfish. All right. So first we need to find a starfish. Like <laughs> this guy's kind of goofy. I like this one though. Let's go with him. Oh yeah. Perfect. So derpy. All right. And then let's create that sprite up at the top above our draw loop. Starfish. And set the animation. Starfish to the starfish. All right. And we're going to start him. Let's give him like a random location between 25 and 375. Uh, on Y, rather. No, on X, yeah. No, what happened? There we go. Yeah, on X, 25 to 375. And then it'll start at... Uh, let's see, the top is 0 Y, yeah. Start at 0, so it always starts at the top. And then... Let's run it and see. Oh yeah, we gotta give him change his scale because he's way too big. So sprites scale starfish scale. Let's make him zero point two. See what that looks like. Let's make him even smaller. Zero point one. There we go, itty bitty guy. And then. Random starting location for it so that it falls from a different location each time the program is ran. We did that here. And then use the counter pattern to make the starfish fall slowly. So we're going to add to Y. Well, let's do it the tradition, this, this way. So you might like that better. Oh, whoops. Instead of writing in there, I can go back to sprites, sprite.y starfish.y we're going to add to it uh, let's make him fall slowly there he goes and then let's make him spin while he's falling so we're going to update his rotation starfish.rotation math we're going to make him spin clockwise Back to sprites dot rotation starfish dot rotation spin there he goes <laughs> I love that you can make him spin really fast if you wanted to most excellent all right and he should fall at a different X every time we run the program. Awesome. All right, let's finish there and continue. What else are we adding to this scene? More sea creatures? Whoa, look at that. Looks like it's swimming towards me. I want to make that. You have a pretty great underwater scene so far. Let's add one last fish, but this time we want to make the fish appear as it's swimming right at us. I don't think I've ever done this before. Find a fish similar to the purple one in the image. So we're going to try to find him. Fish. Mm, do, 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 do. There he is. All right, we'll use the U. Uh, I'm going to call you purple fish. All right, back to the code. All right, we found that and we added it. Set the purple fish's starting size to zero since it was, will be growing. Use the counter pattern to make the purple fish appear as if it's swimming towards us. Feel free to get creative and add more moving 
creatures. We're just going to do this. Let's see. The size of it. Hmm. Okay, so let's get this thing on the screen. And I'm going to put it behind the rest of the stuff. Okay, purple fish. And then we need to set that animation. To the purple fish. All right. Uh, 200, 200 is fine for its location. We're going to use scale equals zero. And then we'll add to scale down here. And I think that should do it. So purple fish dot scale gets. Um, Grab another scale block, control C, control V, run, run, whoa, okay, so he might start at zero, but he's growing way too fast, so let's try 0. Uh, 0. 0.01, run, here we go, is that... Yeah, that's what we wanted, I guess. And then... Oh, you know what? I think this needs to be down here. Let's see what that looks like. Run. There we go. That's more like it. All right, what else did it want us to do? More moving sea creatures to the scene. Perhaps a jellyfish moving diagonally. OK. Or a fish swimming backwards while doing flips. Animation, let's find a jellyfish. We'll use you. I'm just going to call you jelly. All right, let's create this thing. Uh, we'll put them up here. What did we want him to do? Move diagonally. So we're going to start him up here, top left. So zero, zero. And then let's make him move on both X and Y. Jelly. Jelly. And then do, 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 math drawer. We're going to add to both. Jelly dot Y plus two, let's say. And then jelly dot X plus two. Run it. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot to set his animation. Jelly. Oh, I need to make him much, 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 much smaller. Scale. Jelly scale. Let's make it 0 0.1. Make him little. There he goes. All right, and then it made, it wanted us, it said one more thing, a fish moving backwards while doing flips. Okay, so let's add one more fish. We're doing all the things. Uh, let's see. We'll have a little gray fish. Relabel him, great fish. Back to the code. Let's get him onto the screen. Gray fish. Set his animation. Gray fish. 
I'm going to put him over here at 0, 0, or 0, X, and um, let's give him, like, kind of near the top, 50 Y. And then how big does he show up? Oh, I got to set the animation. Dang it, Mr. Decker. Remember what to do. All right, he's huge, so let's set his scale. Control C, Control V. Make him well, much smaller, 0 0.3, reset run. Make him slightly smaller, 0 0.2. All right, and then he's going to, oh, he needs to go backwards. So let's flip him using that button right there. Back to the code, and we're going to set his rotation and add to it using the counter pattern down here. So gray fish dot rotation math. He's doing backflips rotation. Uh, minus five. Let's have him doing quick backflips, and we're also going to add to his X. You can move across the screen. Grayfish. Uh, Grayfish.x2. Run it. There we go. Now he's zooming across and spinning, doing those flips. Oh, wait. You know what? I need to add to his rotation right here on line 41. So that's going to be a plus, because I think it said it, he needs to do backflips. There we go. All right. Lots of action there. OK, we're going to finish right there. And I think that is the end of what we need to do. The rest of it is just optional. You can make a dance scene, or you can uh, push it even further by making an animated school activity. Those sound like fun. And uh, yeah, we've got a really complex little ocean scene here. We've got bubbles rising to the top. We've got a big purple fish swimming right at us. We've got our jellyfish going on a diagonal, our starfish, our derpy starfish coming down the screen. We've got our fish swimming across, doing backflips, doing all kinds of stuff. Awesome. All right. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'll catch you next time for lesson 14.